The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Birch. Hey, everybody, this is Birch. Um, you know, I have a bunch of friends at New York City Comic Con, which is going on right now as I record this video. There'll be a couple days before this uh, video goes up, at least. And a number of announcements, you know, various things. You know, there's a lot of rumors around things that DC is doing, some new creators coming into the mix. Um, a lot of stuff. Um, it, this is the first convention where I think every piece of news that's been leaked is something that I heard about several months ago. And I have kind of two emotions about it. One is, um, Jesus, uh, it's like I, I'm struck by the fact that some of these plans are more than a year old that are kind of being leaked New York City Comic Con. It's like, this is year old news. And, I, you know, I'm struck by the fact that comics, it really needs to speed up. So what's on my mind a lot lately, because I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, thought and research and I'm actually writing some papers kind of in my other life around uh, digital disruption and tech. And increasingly, if you want to be successful in kind of the world of kind of new internet business, you have to be on a 60 day to 90 day max plan of response to any kind of innovation or any kind of, you know, evolution. And so it, it's particularly striking when comics are like these ideas are leaking out into the press. They're probably like six to 12 months away. I know a lot of stuff's going down next summer, summer of 2024. And the origin to a lot of these ideas was 2021. It's 2023 now. We're talking two years in the past. And uh, it, it blows me away, to be honest, that we're that far behind. And if comics hopes to kind of succeed, that, that gap has to be matched. It has to be closed. It's not, it, you know, workable for big story ideas, big, uh, big concepts to um, be thought of 24 to 36 months before they hit the street. A lot just changed. I mean, think about where you were in the summer of 21, okay? We were, oh, what, a year and a half into COVID. Things are starting to get better, but still, it's, I mean, people are getting tired of it. There's like, oh, variants, stuff's happening. And like, imagine the amount of world that has changed in that period of time. And keep in mind, a lot of comic writers like to pride themselves in being kind of super up to speed in what's going on, you know, really kind of on the cusp of, uh, you know, pop culture, you know, we are current. I, don't, I can't tell you the amount of, uh, comic creators who regularly brag about like, Hey, did you know what? Taylor Swift dropped a new song, a new track as the kids say. And, uh, I listened to that track. I am current PS. Here's a comic idea that I'm, uh, you know, contemplating my little noggin that's going to hit streets in three years. I mean, Jesus, the way, I mean, the comic book creator, uh, you know, mortality rate is, uh, like three years is pushing it. I, I mean, it, it, it makes me wonder how many like amazing earth changing crossover event story ideas have died because the creator who thought of them passed away before the, the comic publisher got around to producing them. I mean, good God. It's, it's painful, but anyway, a lot of, uh, a lot of activity at uh, New York comic, New York city comic con, uh, a lot of attention. Uh, but somebody mentioned it, it, uh, well, I mean, I'll read you the text. I won't tell you, I won't tell you who it's from because we're being secretive. It's just comic seems to be going through a manic phase right now, a manic phase. It says, uh, it almost reminds me of terminal lucidity in which hospice Hospice patients exhibit exuberance and optimism right before they die. All right, so comics aren't dying, to be clear. Now I know it's only like, well, but wait a minute. No, no, they're not dying because you're thinking about it too literally. Companies may die. People creating in those companies may die. And we're speaking dying metaphorically. We're not talking about the actual passing away of which, you know, in the last week, we've had the severely tragic passing of uh, Keith Giffen who is a, a legend. And when I posted this, a lot of people came in and are like, I have no idea who that dude is. Dude, fuck you. 
seriously, like that, like there's no excuse for that. You cannot, I, I do believe there's some hard and fast rules here. And one of them is if you're, if you're commenting or you're doing YouTube videos or you're, you're, you're in the culture war and you're talking about, well, comics suck these days. And then you say, you don't know who Keith Giffen is, then fuck you. You have no, you, sorry, you, you get a go away now. You don't get a comment on it. You, you, you lost your privilege. To make any comments in this this state, it be it's the equivalent of saying, like, ah man, modern comics blow. Who's Jack Kirby? Who's George Perez? Never heard of those dudes. Yeah, fuck off. I know, I know. You shouldn't be keeping people in comics, but yeah, these are yeah, that's some gatekeeping that needs to happen, right? I mean, <laughs> come on, come on. And by the way, if you're sitting here going, I don't know, who that is here's the thing. That's okay. I don't know when you came in comics, but the key is if you're if you're complaining about the current state of comics and then a name gets thrown out in the, uh, you know, I don't drop the word legend casually. If you don't know who some of these people are, there's this there's this amazing service guard called Google or if you're a nerd Bing that allows you to quickly search and find out who these people are. And maybe you should, particularly if you're, you know, if you're really up in arms about current comics. Then for the love of God, don't be an asshole. Go look at when comics were amazing and go check out Legion five years later or the Justice League or 8,000 other things that that a guy who by far had the, the best sarcasm and comedy of anybody I know in comics. Anyone. He's given us a fucking legend. Anyway, uh, be that as it may. <laughs> I don't know. What? I don't know. It, I I guess um, I know it's odd, but it it truly hasn't sunk in yet. This is a guy I've met at many many times at cons, and this is easily one of the nicest people I've ever met. And yeah, I'm gonna grab a couple people, and you know we'll we'll have a chat about Keith Giffen, and you know it's and everything he gave to comics. But uh, comics um, comics aren't going to die. There's still gonna be people producing comics. There's still great ideas. There's still great concepts. There's still great stories. Comics are going to continue. But the current, and I don't even know what to call it, the current, like, uh, phoning in aspect. And, and by your mind, if you're a comic creator, you're listening to this, you're like, God, God damn it, how is he pissing up? Like, I just spent all night working on this cover. Or I just wrote this script. I'm, pro- I'm not talking about you. I'm the people who are in comics seemingly... To either try and get a job in Hollywood, although can we all admit that dream is dead now? I mean, it, it is now. I know, I know. The writer strike is over, so everything will go back to normal, and you're going to get that big Hollywood gig any day now. Wink. Sure. Uh, a lot of you are working very hard in comics, and and regardless of your talent, like whether you're at the beginning, middle, or end of your career, wherever you are, you know, hard work is is yeah, is rewarded. But if your goal is to be in comics in order to get clout for Instagram or Twitter, then I, you really deserve everything that's coming to you, which is poverty. I, just, I mean, sorry, I, I mean to be callous about it, but like I, I, I there, there's here's the weird part. I've been thinking about it a lot lately, and this idea that you know there become this narrative. Um, in comics and commentators. I'm like, you know, all the creators should be nice to the fans. The fans are buying this book, so you should be nice. Well, I don't I don't quite go that far because sometimes the fans are pricks. And, you know, if you're an asshole, you know, coming back at you like an asshole is, it, you know, some sometimes justified. Now, you might say it's not pragmatic. That's a different thing. If you rely on other people's money in order to make your living, then chances are you want to suck it up, buttercup, and, you know, be nice to the people who are paying you. But, you know, in, in all things considered, you can't fault somebody who, um, you know, goes ahead and goes off on a fan who is clearly just trolling and being an asshole. Do we have to defend these people? I know there's a lot of YouTube channels out there like the customer is always right. Yeah, the customer. The customer being an uh, being, you know, the key word where the customer is actually somebody who's willing to pay money. Where, you know, in a normal world, they're wanting to buy comics or wanting to shell out cash or wanting to have that transaction. And then the person on the other end, in this case, creator is an asshole. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with the customer on that part. 
But there's a let. Can we all admit that there's some quote unquote customers who really have no intention of spending money, who are just trolling and are being pricks? Those people. Eh, I mean, it's hard to tell who's who. I grant you, but you know, do those people really need to be treated nicely? I don't know. You know, I I don't know. Look, I, wait. Sorry. You know what am I saying? I do know. Fuck no. No, they don't. I think we need to start, I'm like, let's stop all pretending like there's some blurry, impossible to figure out line between the people who actually want to read comics, enjoy them, spend money, and have a good time, and the people who are just here for the L, for the lulls. Can we can we can we kind of separate those two? Because it's it's pretty clear to everyone with half a brain cell that there's a difference. And so for the people who are just here for the lulls, I mean, I you know, you're you're here for the drama, so you get what you ask for. But the comics, um, I, I agree with the sentiment of, of what got posted because there is an aspect I'm watching like people flip out. I'm watching just very bizarre behavior from people. And it really does feel like kind of the last manic celebration for people praying that they can just go back to the way it was, say, eight, nine years ago. And it really is eight, nine years ago. You know, there are a lot of people who got hired in and pushed into comics. And and you know what? Several of you are going to hate this. But fuck it, it's true. DC did this New 52 thing. And uh, granted, the quality certainly was not there at the end. But the marketing was, was on par. It did what it needed to do. And it flushed a bunch of cash into comics. And DC in particular. And, you know, eh, a little bit earlier than that. Um, you know, Mark Miller did Civil War. And a lot of you have, have uh, you know, I, I've, po I've said this before, but it's absolutely true. That comic was a beast of sales. And I will tell you, uh, because we interviewed him, even Mark Miller doesn't fully digest or understand what that, that comic, what that series did for Marvel and comic shops. That thing was a juggernaut. That is not an understatement. You can piss all over him. You can hate the series. You can do all kinds of things. But that thing made bank like nothing you've ever seen before. That single-handedly kept a lot of comic shops alive. Now, Marvel isn't going to go and like send a thank you card to him. But if you look at the amount of comics and IP and you know money that Civil War made, I, astronomical what that series made. Way more than he has ever made from royalties or his Netflix deal or anything else. That thing was a beast that's understated how well that did. The combination of Civil War and New 52 opened up a ton of opportunities for comic creators. And it allowed a lot of new people to enter the field. People who, you know, had liked comics with their kids and everything else, but maybe not have had the skills to actually do anything about it. And sure enough, a lot of people got jobs that, quite frankly, were not ready for prime time. And, you know, fast forward 10 years and, uh, and here we are, we did not pay and, you know, incent new people to come into the market. And now like, uh, you know, we're, we're, the things are, things are hurting a little bit. So it's an interesting time. Um, uh, it is, uh, you know, will it recover? Yeah, it will with a very different set of people. No, no, not all crowdfunding people, but different people for sure. It's, it's, um, it's, it's fascinating to watch it all come past. Anyway, little, little bit thought for you tonight. I don't know. It's probably the middle of the day when you're listening to this, but thanks for listening.